Hi, and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. So you may have seen some of my recent videos on QO100 and the antenna that I've been using, such as a dish, a potty, which is a patch antenna, in combination with an LMB. Well, this is what I've been using up to now. This is a kind of a, a well-proven design, uh, a patch antenna with some copper pipe that goes down into the feed section uh, of the uh, LMB. So you can use it as almost like a dual band antenna. Uh, you're receiving on 10 gigs and then you're transmitting on 2.4 gigahertz. Now I come across another design from a ham radio operator D08 Papa Alpha Tango. And what that is, that's a helix antenna, a 3.5 turn helix antenna. And it's been made in such a way that you can also use the LMB at the same time. So on the D08 Papa Alpha Tango's QRZ page, he has a nice write up about this antenna. And what you will notice from these images here is that it's gonna need some 3D printed parts. Now, obviously you need a 3D printer or you need a friend that's got a 3D printer. Now here we have the finished article. Um, so the 3D printed parts is this part here. This is to support the 3.5 turn helix antenna. And then we have this base plate here, which is like a reflector base plate the, that the reflector attaches to. This is the reflector. This is made out of aluminium. It's four millimeters thick, my one. And I purchased a hundred millimeter diameter aluminium disc. Uh, I think it was off of eBay for around five pounds. I then used a 51 millimeter hole saw to get the hole in the middle. Now, when you look at the engineering diagram for the reflector, you'll see that it's 106 millimeters. Now, as I said, I got 100 millimeters. Um, so there's a slight kind of gap here. I'm not entirely sure how much uh, difference it's going to make. So let's just go through this part here. So like I said, we've got the reflector screw part. You see there's some threads on here. I'll show you that cone in a moment. We've got the aluminium plate, which is held on by three screws here. I tapped these holes out to M3 size, which makes it quite nice and uh, is quite sturdy. What we've also got here on the back is an N-type female socket. I brought the one with a kind of, it's kind of raised up slightly. This makes it so it just gives me a bit more clearance around this hole that comes through the reflector base plate. Now I use quite thick copper wire for the helix itself. I think this is four mil, four or five mil. The holes here, these are kind of an angle. It's okay though, I just had to kind of drill them out. And then I've just used some hot glue uh, to hold it in place. Now I only put the hot glue in once you've finished tuning it. Now when it comes to tuning this antenna or this helix, you're going to need one of these. Now this is a, it's a, it's a vein, I think it's 70 by 17 mil. Uh, you can see how it's mounted here. It just connects to the center pin of the N-type connector. And the way that we tune it is by twisting this round so it goes up and down, so it goes closer to the reflector or further away. Well, that's how I managed to tune it. And um, when I first assembled it, the tuning was quite off. So I had to wind it down a little bit so that this distance between uh, here and the reflector between these two parts was a lot closer. And then I managed to get some really good SWR figures. We'll take a look at those in a little while. So there we go, that's that's the reflector. And if you look through here, you can see this is what the LMB will actually see. So how do we put the LMB in? Well, firstly, the LMB pushes into here and you'll see that we've got these two kind of little arcs. Now we have a screw that goes through this part and it clamps these two together. Now you have to be really careful because the first one that I printed off and tried, I over tightened it and it actually snapped. So you've got to be really careful when you're tightening this up. Don't over tighten it, otherwise it will snap. Now I'm using PLA uh, for my filament in my 3D printer, so it might not be the best material. Um, sorry, just to touch on here, to hold on the helix support i've used some hot glue now it looks like there's quite a lot there but obviously i don't want it to fall off and i also put a dab of super glue as well under there just to give it a bit more extra strength so let's just pop in the lmb so here i've got a bullseye lmb i think these are fantastic you don't need to do any modifications to them um, for uh, stability they work, work really well i've got a video dedicated on these if you want to go and have a look and what we do is we just push it through
until it kind of sits like this. You can see that there. And then I've got enough clearance here for when I attach this to the end of the dish arm. Um, and then you can obviously rotate it wherever you want the uh, connector to show where you can attach your coax. So once it's pushed in, I'll probably just tighten it up slightly with the screw that's just down here. And then that'd be nice and secure. So to cover this, you can print one of these. This is the, the cone, which is probably why this particular helix antenna combination has uh, been dubbed the ice cream cone or ice cream cone uh, antenna. And it literally just, uh, by the way, this, this took around 14 hours to print on my printer. I uh, used the Ender 3 Pro with the uh, Marlin firmware too. So you just screw this over, screw this up like this. Now, what I found is, is a hold this end. If you hold this, it, it doesn't turn very well because obviously you're squeezing against the uh, thread. So just hold the end and uh, tighten it up. And there we go. So this is the Helix and LMB combo attached to the dish arm. The thick black cable that you can see there, that's feeding the Helix with the 2.4 gigahertz signal. Uh, the cable is around 1.5 meters long and it's called Formula Zero, which is an extremely low loss coax. The white cable that you can see there is 75 ohm coax and that's connected to the green output port of the Bullseye LMB. And this feeds directly into the receive side of the Pluto going through a bias T and a 20 dB attenuator. Now I still can't receive QO100 strong enough to hear myself coming back down to the tree issue that I've mentioned in previous videos. But luckily the beacon is actually strong enough for SDR console's geostationary feature to keep it locked on frequency. So the cone just screws nicely over this reflector holder and once screwed on, I think it looks rather cool. There are some holes around where the N-type connector is and as mentioned before, I printed this with PLA so I'm not convinced that it's going to be very waterproof. I think when it comes to leaving this outside permanently and in use, I'll use a plastic bag over the whole assembly just to keep the rain off of it. So here's the inside of my QO100 ground station based on a Pluto SDR and a version 3 SG Labs amplifier, which provides a nice 20 watts at 2.4 gigs. Now I do have a video on my channel dedicated to this if you're interested in seeing how this was built and what each of the components does. Now before transmitting with this Helix antenna, I wanted to test the SWR and return loss. So I calibrated my PS100 by attaching the small piece of coax onto an anal analyzer and then using the calibration tools at the end of the coax, which would then plug into the Helix. Now this way, I wasn't including the coax in my measurements. So as you can see here, I have a nice low SWR of around 1.1 at 2.4 gigs. And if we switch over to the sweep screen, we can see a really nice low SWR between 2.398 gigs and 2.404 gigs. Obviously, we don't need that much bandwidth for the QO100 uplink, but it's nice to see that it's quite broadbanded. Okay, um, M0 KDS, M0 DQW returning. Okay, so I'm just playing around with a graphic equalizer now, and I've hit the low shelf, which looks like it's killed some of the base, and it's boosted a little bit more kind of top end. Uh, I don't want to bore you with this. <laughs> I can probably do this on my own at some point because I can listen back to myself. But um, how, how, how does that sound now? Hmm? Yep, that's, uh, I would say that's a lot, lot better. Good improvement on, uh, on what, when we've begun on. So um, yeah, that, that sounds a lot better to be honest with, uh, with you. Um, I was wondering what what kind of setup are you currently uh, currently running that Matt? Uh, what kind of what? Sorry, did you say A antenna? Uh, yeah, the antenna, and also um, which um, aud what your audio chain looks like. Okay, right. So. Now I did my test transmission with and without the cone on and the receiving TX didn't appear to be affected with it on or off, which is obviously good to know. 
The QSO that you just heard was with my friend Arvid, M0KDS. And as you could see there, my signal was at a decent strength, almost on par with one of the beacons, which is just to the left of my signal. Now I still need to play around with some of the audio settings so that I can make the SSB sound a bit better, but I think it's almost there. I'd just like to say a big thanks to Patrick, DO8PAT from Germany, for sharing his ice cone feed design with us all. I think it's a great alternative to using the standard potty antenna. Now, apart from the obvious 3D printer parts, all of the other parts are readily available from eBay or general hardware stores. If any of you guys have tried this antenna or made something similar, I'd be interested to know your results. So please leave them down in the comments below. Until the next video, stay safe, take care. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.